Hi, Larry WD0AKX. Today I thought we'd take a little look at a Clegg 99er from Clegg Labs from about 1961 or 1962. Nice vintage piece of gear. It is an AM transceiver for 6 meters. I haven't seen too many uh, close-up photos or videos. Uh, there's a few, but I uh, thought we'd take kind of a close-up look here at the operation and uh, what it looks like inside. The Clegg 99er was new on the market in the early 1960s, sold for about $140 at the time. It covered the lower 2 MHz portion of the 6 meter ham radio band. It is a crystal type transmitter. I have a crystal for 50.400 and it did have a tunable receiver. You could add an optional VFO for transmit if you wanted to. Now back in the day AM was the popular mode to use on 6 meters and there's a lot of local activity on 6 meters in many locations. Now since this is the first time I have powered up this radio, as I usually do as you've probably seen in previous videos, I like to bring up the power slowly using my isolation transformer here and I can vary the voltage, bring it up slowly over time, make sure uh, there's no uh, shorts in the radio or anything and I do this over a period of a few hours, a couple hours anyhow and as you can see I'm bringing the voltage up slowly the pilot lamp is beginning to light on the radio and we eventually reached the 120 volt level and the current draw looks about what I would expect and I am hearing audio on the radio so that's a good sign I'll do a little screwdriver test and stick it in the antenna socket and back and we have static and you'll notice the spot control here. What that does is allow you to uh, listen in for your transmit frequency, your crystal, on the receiver dial and that way you'll know where to line it up while listening for other stations when you're transmitting. And if the dial is off a little bit you can manually calibrate it. As you can see the dial is off just a little bit. I want to be at 50.400 so I can manually adjust that and uh, there I am right on. All I was doing there is aligning the dial pointer to give me an accurate read out there. And here you'll see the S meter is kind of reading low here and there's a setting on the back of the radio for the S meter so I will adjust that to read zero on the meter. Now let's move on to the transmit side to adjust the transmitter we need to use the multiplier and the plate and the load controls in that order and peak the power for maximum indication on the meter. So we'll go ahead and turn the radio into the send position for transmit and we'll peak our controls. Now these controls will interact with each other somewhat so we have to go back and kind of tweak them over a few times and try to get that maximum indication. The manual does say if, if I have an indication of half scale or more that I am probably transmitting uh, 5 watts or so output at the antenna connector. So according to the meter on the radio it is working just uh, like it's supposed to here. I'm getting full power output and I can verify the power output on an external meter. It requires a high impedance type microphone with an RCA type jack so we'll go ahead and plug that in. Now I'm going to go ahead and see if the Clegg will receive first of all. I have my Elecraft KX3 here and I have both radios run into a dummy load antenna. I'm going to transmit on the KX3 and you can see I'm receiving One, a signal two, three, on the Clegg. WD0AKX testing. Notice it does One, two, have three, the bouncy four, type five. meters. One, two, three, I do not four, like that. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Test. One, two, three, four. All right. Now I will transmit on the Clegg. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Test. WD0AKX. Transmitting on the Clegg Labs 99er. And listening on the Illicraft KX3 right now. Through the little speaker in the KX3. So uh, audio might not sound all that great. Just coming through the little speaker here. And since this is a tube type radio, it does have some heat buildup, so it does get quite warm. That's why the ventilation holes in the housing. So it's important not to set anything on top of this radio. It does need some air. We'll go ahead and take a look at the rear panel. We have the antenna jack here on the left. And then there's a mic gain adjustment. You can set your mic level. And then here's the S meter adjust control and then we have the power and accessory jack 
you can use an external VFO here if you want to and the fuse holder so let's take a look inside there's three screws to remove one on the front and two in the rear and then it slides out just like this now remember a tube type gear has a lot of high voltages so if you don't know what you're doing uh, with the tube type equipment uh, don't mess with it you could get knocked on your butt or even worse and it looks pretty clean here so far uh, not too bad uh, for the age could use just a little bit of cleanup and there's one electrolytic capacitor I see here on the top side that could eventually use a replacing would be a good idea I guess now this is not a good radio for a new ham or anything like that this is more for the vintage radio collector and we'll take a look at the underside as you can see it's very clean here and it's all point to point wiring this is how uh, things were done back in the day and somebody had to spend a lot of time soldering all those connections by hand so I hope you enjoyed another look at some vintage ham radio gear from the early 1960s. Thanks for watching in 7.3. So I thought we'd take a little look at a Clegg Labs 99er. Clegg, uh, it is a 6 meter AM transceiver. And it's a good piece of... Uh,